I believe in you every day that the word of God is read. And I speak in faith that that word is able to protect me like a sword and keep me from being destroyed. I still can speak in faith that when that lady that was traveling with cancer was healed, I believe that you already knew that she was healed and she got up and sat in that chair and she got up and went to work. And you watched her work. I believe that you already knew that she was healed. God is a God of healing. God can take care of you. God is to get all the glory. He gets all the glory and honor for you. Understand you're not alone. Nobody gives you praise. Nobody watches you right now. That you are not alone. Me and my wife take our job seriously. If God, somebody asks for prayer or we pray for people that don't ask for prayer because the Spirit, we're led by the Spirit. And the Spirit of God tells us to pray for somebody. But when we pray, we are praying, believing God as it would be our own bodies or someone that we are connected to personally. We pray and believe God Almighty will intervene, touch your bodies or whatever it may be. I just know that God hears me when I pray. And when something goes in the flesh and it's not right, I go to God and ask for some answers because I want to know how can he work with this. There's some people that I pray for that may not come through, but God explains to me how some of them have to make up their minds to it. So, because this is what I'm going to be teaching on a little bit this morning, and I don't know if I'll finish it, but we got to know that we got to do our part. And I know people says God can move and do things without me. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. Because he even said in his word, if you don't praise me, the very rock will praise you. I'm going to get praised whether you praise me or not, basically what he's saying. But us as the creation of him, of, of him creating us, our creator, God Almighty, he always uses us. All through the Bible, he uses his creation to warn, to pray for one another, to do certain things. And, and people will, will always say, well, if God said it, he will do it. I ain't got to even worry about it because his word said, my word will not return unto me null and void. What I say, I will do, and what I do, I make it good. And we take it out of context to a point is, let's just sit back. We ain't got to do nothing else. God said it. We, have, we don't even have to do nothing. That is true to a point of you won't get your blessings. You won't get to your destiny. Yeah. Because you won't go there. We always wait on God to do everything for us, especially the Western world, to do something for us Instead of us doing and be led by the Spirit and do what we have to do, and God will put us in the destination or the place, may I say, to receive your favor from man, to get whatever it may be from the Lord or answer or whatever. But if I just stay seated and I just keep doing my thing and just trust what we call trust God, People in the Western world takes that out of context of trusting God. I'm just trusting God, but I'm still living the same old way, doing what I want to do, say the same things I want to say, act the way I want to act, but I just trust God. And then wonder why we ain't getting our blessings. Wonder why we ain't getting nowhere. Well, God says, trust me as I teach you the way. So me and you have to be taught the way. That means he direct our steps. We got to get up. We got to go to work. We got to get up, put applications in. We got to get up. We got to pray. We got to go vote. We got to do this. We got to do that. You got to do it. If you sit back and say, let God have it, I'm just going to receive it. Please, anybody watching over the internet, please come to me and tell me that. I want, I want to know how you did that because I want to get in that blessing. I want to receive that kind of blessing that I ain't got to do nothing. Don't even have to pray. God is going to just take care of it. Well, I want to know 
how you did it and, and see if God can teach me how you do that. Because I, I know when I sit back and don't do nothing waiting on God to a point of him not let, telling me what else I can do, what else I can think about, what else I can check on, what else I have, whatever it may be. I found out I just, I never seen nothing. Ain't nobody came. My job has never came to me and gave me a check because I was waiting on my check. It ain't, ain't happening. If it is, that's what I said. I want to know. Now, there is supernatural miracles that God does things. I know that too. But me and you have to do our part by the word of God and be led by the spirit to know where to go, where to live, where to whatever it may be. You have to move with the spirit of God. Not when you want to. You have to move with the Lord. And then the trust is trusting God that he's leading me to the right place. But I got to go. I got to go to work. I got to get out here and cut this grass because I'm praying somebody just trusting God, somebody just come out here and cut it for me. That may happen if the other one is led by the Spirit. But if you're healthy and you just don't want to miss the ball game and you want God to send somebody to cut your grass, guess what? It's going to grow three more inches next week. It ain't happening. I was trusting God, but it ain't happening. Well, God says, I'm, you trusted me. I gave you two legs and feet and arms. Get out there and sweat. Cut what you can. Do what you can. As the Bible says, do all that you can do, then stand and see the salvation of your Lord. <laughs> then that's where the real trust comes from. That's where the, the true favor comes from. That's where God says, I will intervene on your behalf. But he ain't going to intervene on Tim for Tim and for Tim to keep talking negative and Tim keep acting the way he acts and Tim keeps, bless God, I don't have to do nothing. And keep on, and he's going to say, yes, sir. Uh, God ain't gave me no pork and beans today because I trust him and he still ain't pork and beans ain't coming. He said, the pork and beans, the shelf is full at the store. But you got to have money to go get it. Yeah, you do. That's the world system. You ain't laid nobody's laid no, nothing on nobody's heart to go get you something, get, buy you something. No. And bless God. What, well, if you would start acting that you already have, meaning you do all that you can do, you take that little bitty minimum wage job and you work as it's paying you $100 an hour and you work at it. You trust in God. You ain't trusting man. You trust in God. See, that's the difference. That's how the way I was saying, that's how the world thinks. That's how the world thinks. But Christianity has allowed that thinking to get into them too. I trust God, but I'm not going to do nothing. I trust God that's going to give us a building that, that he said they're going to build, but we ain't going to lift a hand. God's going to send the laborers to the field. He would do that. If all of us couldn't move, and, uh, and God told us that we, we're going to do it, but yet we all can't move, Lord, I'm explaining the best I can. Help me with it. But me and you as Christians have to walk in faith, have to walk and do our part. You have to check on things. You have to ask for this or ask for that. Or ask for understanding for here. I got a question. Can I help you? And as I, God leads me, you can't. Okay? And then I go to another one. Lord, help me. God, you know I need this. And as God leads you, he's going to never fail you. Because he said, wherever I said in my word, I do. Meaning, when I tell you, I will help you on your behalf. When you're doing what you can do, 
then I'm going to get up off my throne. This is a picture language. And I'm going to come in and say, the doors that cannot be opened will be opened. The doors that has been shut, that is, that's open, that's all giving you confusion and the world's trying to say, you're not going to come this way or whatever, I mean, or whatever it may be. I'm going to shut some of the doors that needs to be shut. I need that job, that job, $100 an hour. I got to have that job. I got to have that job. No, you don't. What? Who, God, where you come from? Because it's going to be shut down in two years or ten years. God already knows. But you're doing all that you can do, see? And as you follow God, you have to trust God. Trust God. The door that has been closed, trust God that that door needs to have been closed. The door that is open, I'm going to trust God that this is the door that I've got to go in. Now, there's more tea. Can, but it's always something. But there's more teaching than trust. You can just, I'm just barely scratching the surface of everything I ever preach. It's always barely scratching. You can take weeks and teaching on all the categories that God has messages He gave me throughout my life. You can teach on them for years. But you have to trust God. The world is filled with trial. And hardship. Filled with it. It is full of violence of all kinds. And it is easy to become worry, worried and have anxiety as you face relationships and struggles. Your relationships, marriages is having problems. Financial problems, bad news and grief. You lose a loved one or you lose your finances. You file bankruptcy or whatever it may be. And it's easy to become with all of this in front of you that you give up hope. You give up, I got to keep walking. I don't need me walking. I don't walk, walk, walk. But you still got to trust God if you call yourself a Christian. Now the world does this. Yes, God. This is what the Lord just put in my spirit. The world does this to a point unless they sold out to the one who they serve. If they sold out to Lucifer who served like you have been seeing a lot of things going inside the United States, they're going to keep pushing. They're going to keep lying. And they're going to keep stealing. They ain't going to sit down there and just let God take and have his way because it ain't my way. The devil's way. But us as Christians have a thinking of God just don't have to have me. He don't have to have me sing a song. So I won't even come. He don't have to have me to preach. So the preacher stop coming. Then what and when or how this is going to get down to where God said it's going to be at. But he read that Bible, he uses Jeremiah, Elijah, Elisha, Moses, Peter, Paul. Oh, Lord, somebody was asking me about Deborah the other day at our little picnic. And I did a little study on Deborah. I ain't going there, but I'm going to go ahead and give some of these religious folks a big scare, even over the Internet. Don't you tell me a woman can't prophesy and preach. If it ain't. If, it is, if you think that, go read the book of Judges in Deborah. She was the first woman prophet. <laughs> Woo! But the Bible said a woman got to be shut up in the church. I'll explain that to you later. But I'm not going there. But that's how we do as Christians. Always this, that, that. My God. Trust God. Our daily lives can be married by conflict and turmoil constantly in this world, especially as we move forward. Because the Bible even tells you the world is fixing to wax colder and colder and colder. No matter who is in charge, things is, the Bible is going to be fulfilled. 
and things is going to happen. But you and I, as long as we are here on this earth, we have a part that we got to play. Woo, he just told me, I'm going to share this with you. I got a message coming is, is what part are you playing? What part are you playing? What do you mean? I'm going to give you a little nugget, and it's coming down the pipeline. Oh, Judas played a part to have God crucified. I, is that your part? Is that your part? Every person has a part. Whether you do think so or not, every person's got a part for this to come down. And God gave me a message with, which part are you playing? You think Judas was playing, hey, I'm going to be Judas and I'm going to portray the Lord. Look at me. No, he didn't start out that way. That's a little nugget for you. But trust God. The title on this will be Trust God and Have His Peace. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to give us peace. You can find it in Isaiah 9, verse 6. Prophet Isaiah prophesied Jesus coming. And I forgot what the Bible scholar said, how many years it was before Jesus ever came. Since the prophecy of Isaiah. Don't quote me on it. I think it was several, when I say several, a couple of hundred years maybe. But don't quote me on it. Forget it. Let the Lord bring it to my memories. But look where he says, for a child is born to us. A son is giving to us. Who's he talking about? All of creation of the human race. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Now, you want to have somebody to help you to get over something or get through something or whatever, yes, it does. It, it's good to have someone you can talk to, which is perfectly fine. But the wonderful counselor is more and more you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he can be your wonderful counselor. Woo! Yeah. Wonderful teacher. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And look what he says. Prince of peace. Oh, he's walking with me. Let's have peace now. If I'm a child of his, the prince of peace is walking with me. So that means, oh, I'm getting ahead. That means I may have to face the fiery furnace. Because he didn't promise that everything's going to be pretty and tiptoe through the tulips like Americans think it ought to be all the time. I may have to fight, face the fiery furnace, but the Prince of Peace is with me. He's inside of me. And if he don't close that door, and if he don't do something in the natural right now to make the fire quit out, go out, I'm going to have to go in it. Due to the pressures of the world or the enemy trying to attack, whatever it may be. But I got... Great, great trust. The Prince of Peace is with me, and I will go in the fire. And my God, I hope y'all get the picture language. What happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They went in the fire, didn't even burn, and nothing on their hair. I can't afford no more hair to burn. Didn't even have a cinch of smoke on their clothes. Because they trust God. And that's a big word, trust. Because I'm going to show you how this thing works. The key to your blessings, the key to your walk in the Lord is first, you must give all of ourselves over to Christ. See that I'm truck. Oh Lord, save me. I want you to wash me in your blood. And I want you to take in 
and, and just save me from my sins. And he will. But you got to trust him. How do you know you saved? Because why? I trust him. That he cleansed me. You get the picture? So I could just sit here and say, save me, save me, save me. But if I don't receive it, that he saved me and constantly said, I'm not worthy and I'm not this and I did all this wrong and all that. Well, guess what? You don't trust him and you're not receiving it. We have to give ourselves by repenting and asking him to save our souls and to come into our spirit, into our hearts and be the Lord over our lives. See, this is a walk. This is something that you got. The more you get into the rhythm of trusting God and learn and even learn why you're going through the battle. Because the battle can teach you things. That you can help other people because you're going to believe and trust God. You're going to win. You're going to win what you're walking in. Because I have a trust God where God says, where he said he overcome the world. He overcome everything now. So I'm trusting. But I'm doing my part by trusting. I'm not just sitting here and letting the devil put thoughts in my mind and, and, and stay around in my house. I'm going to do my part by praying and taking authority and speaking the right things. See the difference? And then I just got to trust. But if I'm just trusting and let the devil, please send him away. Please send him away. As I told you, a dream that I had years ago. God, please, while I was balled up like a little baby. Please send him away. Please. And God woke me up, uh, spoke in my dream and says, Quit telling me to send him away. I gave you the power. Stand up. Meaning do my part. Stand up. And rebuke him in my name. And then I. In Jesus name. He shut up and looked at me like. Oh, oh the man getting something here. What do you mean? You got to try the spirit. You got to work. Let God work on you with this. As it would be, hey, I wish I can raise the dead and cast out devils, but I just it don't even happen. Well, try it. Keep practicing it. Go out there when a the dog sitting up there foaming. Huh. Get out of him, devil. <laughs> God make the dog run away from you or whatever it may be. I'm mean, giving you a language, picture language. You got to try it just like me with a little tree. When I prayed for the little tree that it was dead, and then it grew green leaves that built me, oh, this well, it worked. Then I could pray for somebody that's sick or dying. Do your part. But when it don't come back and you find out there's no green leaves on it, don't go and say, well, I knew and drink your coffee that it ain't going to work in anyhow. You just wasting your time praying or going looking for a job. It ain't happening. Well, guess what? You're right. It ain't going to happen. Because that ain't you're, you're the, the favor of the Lord is not going to go up on that. The favor of the Lord will make a way with a seemeth way. You're keeping your door closed, Tim. You're not, getting, you're not getting what I'm telling you, boy. But once Tim started making up his mind, let God teach him on this stuff and try it. My God, this stuff works. This works. And I mean, you, you could be almost right at the edge of bankruptcy and God will make a way. Why? How? Well, hey, uh, I worked 60 and a half hours this week. Hey, uh, I got some overtime for you to work. If you want to work, let's go. Praise God. I was able to pay, pay, pay the bills. Keep them off my back this week. Get the picture? But oh no, I can't work 60 hours. That's just too much. Too much. Well, I gave you a way. I opened the door for you. But God is going to bless me. Send me my check. I open a door for you. Go work. And I go to work. Well, he said, well, Lord, I need more. I, Lord, praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. More is coming. Hallelujah. More is coming. More is coming. More is coming. More is coming. Thinking positive. Thinking positive. Whatever it may be. 
speaking the right thing, but I'm doing my part. But here, in the, especially in Christianity, it's been taught terribly. You got to sit in a pew, pay your tithes, don't say nothing else, and just sit there while the man sit there and just mm, feed you and feed you. You ain't got to pray. And that's why the church does not go nowhere. That's why you don't see the supernatural in, the, in churches because everybody ain't feeding themselves. They're not really trusting in God what they, oh, glory to God, what they are believing. They really don't believe it. Uh oh, that went down, didn't it? Now we got to learn how to trust God, regardless of the situations, regardless of what I see with our lives. Before, here, here's how the Lord taught me this week about this. Even while I was working 60 hours, God always made a way to be able to study, to get his, what he wants. Once you've done all you can do, I'll put it to you. I love that man. He's very faithful to me. And if he could be faithful to me, he could be faithful to you. You got to make up your mind and walk this walk. We got to learn how to trust God with our lives before we can experience his peace. Uh-oh. You got to learn how to trust God before you experience peace. We want to have peace, then trust God. God said it didn't work that way. Trust me, then peace comes. Before we can have experience his peace, we have to believe and trust him as we walk and be led by the Spirit, as we walk the daily lives, as we walk always discerning the Spirit of God is with me, Always walking while you're on your job that the God is favors upon me. Always constantly the mind of Christ. Isaiah 12 verse 2. See, God has to come to save me. I will, this is a prophet, I will trust in him and not be afraid. Uh-oh. He didn't pray, God has to come to save me. I'm begging for peace. No, I will trust in him and not be afraid. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He's the only thing and only person can make me really happy. He's the only thing money can't make me happy. He is my song, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord God is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Hallelujah. You got to see yourself won before you can win. If you, a team walks into a stadium with another team with already defeat on their minds, don't play the game. It's over. You ask why God told me, he said, tell them they wasted their time. You got to see victory. You got to see the lender and not the barrier. You got to see you well and, and delivered. You got to see your family prosper. You got to, you got to see it. Hallelujah. Because when it comes in the natural, that's when you start running. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, just, I seen that just talking a while ago. God built this inside of me. See it already. What do you mean? Well, you take, I went for my physical. Perfect health, praise God. No cholesterol, no high blood pressure, all my sugar, everything. Perfect health. One thing, an enzyme in your muscles is high. Been watching it here for many years. This enzyme that's in your muscles, usually we see it in athletic people. Usually we see this type because people tears their muscles. People that lift weights, 
They tear the muscle. Do you know when you lift weights, you're tearing your muscles to build them up? We see it in that. But we're going to send you to a specialist just to keep a check on it. Went to the specialist years ago, went in and had to do all kinds of other things. And man, he said, all we're going to do is have to keep an eye on it. Variety of things could, that, that could come out of it. Well, this one physical here, the enzyme was way up there. Well, we're going to take care of it Monday, and we've been trying to get tough because it must not be too bad because the doctor ain't even called me. But me and my wife, I always do my own study. See, that's another thing. When a doctor tells you, take two pills and call me in the morning, I don't do that. You ain't putting me on drugs just because you want to put me on drugs. I ain't doing it. Well, the doctor knows best. I'm glad he does or she does. But I know somebody that knows more than a doctor. I want to know why. And then I want to know how I can get off of it. I ain't planning on taking pills all my life. Get the picture? You got to already see it. That means I may have to sacrifice and cut off some weight. Quit eating sugar, whatever it may be. But we want the sugar and God to heal me. That's not trusting. That's ignorant. Well, that went over. But I'm going to find out what it is and do what I have to do to keep a check on it. Me and my wife did our own little study, and it comes from tendonitis. A lot of it comes from tendonitis in your muscles, in your joints. Because you look on the Internet, it's scared you spitless. Could come from your brain, could come from your heart, could come from a lot of stuff. But I don't look at that. But I face it. I do what I have to do. Oh, God. It come from the brain. Man. Holy Ghost, let's get down to business around here. You got to be already sit. That's why I try to tell people, get strength now. Study now. Because when you get in a battle, you, you, it's going to be hard. You're going to have to depend on my faith, so to speak, to stand in the battle with you. All right. He is my strength, my song. He has given me the victory. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Look where it says, trust in the Lord. He didn't say trust in Lord. Trust in the Lord. The problem was with us, especially in the United States, and it could be everywhere across the world, but God is raising me up for the United States for now. Trust in the Lord. Who's your Lord? Who's your Lord? No for I ain't asking for an answer. I'm just trying to say, who's your Lord? Because when in reality, we got a lot of Lords. When it comes down to it. Trust in the Lord. See, we trust in the job that we have. We really don't believe, we really thank God for a job. Hallelujah. Yeah, but let God let you see it's closed tomorrow. What are you going to do? You're going to fall on your knees and complain and cry. Oh, God, I'm scared to death. Oh. No, let him already say, you can go in there and they tell you to go home. Where is your Lord? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, your mind, soul, spirit. Do not depend on your own understanding. I got a little wisdom. But I ain't got enough wisdom to get through this life freely on my own. And I got a news flash for you. Nobody does. Even presidents and kings don't have enough wisdom to get through this life. And they depend on their own understanding and depend on their own understanding of what little they know. Eventually, something's going to come up that you ain't you going to understand it. So that means your understanding can go take you only so far. You're going to have to have somebody supernaturally that can deliver you from every situation, every trial, every burden, every sickness, every death. You've got to have his. 
So you got to learn how to really trust in the Lord. Seek his will in all you do. Uh oh, that's another one. In all you do. I told you before, in all you do, I'm walking, getting my water, praise God. A drink out of the refrigerator, praise God. I'm trusting God. I know God and thanking him already that I got a Coke or whatever it may be I'm getting to drink. Because there's some people that ain't got that yet. But I'm, I'm thinking about everything, how it could get worse. Uh-oh, and I'm also letting him train me how it can get better. Got the picture? It can get better. And he trained you to, well, hey, what if something that do? What are you going to do? Well, I, I run to the bank. The bank said you ain't got good credit. What are you going to do? Well, I, I go, maybe I can run over to my rich relative. Can I, can I borrow it? The rich relative don't like you no more. What are you going to do? I'm going to trust God. Hallelujah. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He will. He will sh show you the path to take. He will lead me and guide me to the place that I need to go. And then maybe when I go there, they give me favor. Oh, you ain't got to worry about credit. I'll rent it to you. Or I'll buy it, you pay me back. I'll make the contract out, and uh, we'll put it in the writing, all illegally, but we'll make a way. Excuse me. Trust God, praise God. Psalms 37, verse 4 through 5. Take delight in the Lord... And he will give you your heart desires. Oh, uh-oh. Commit everything you to to the Lord. And what else? Trust him. I'm trusting him. Both hands in the pocket. And he tell you, cross that road, you got the gold mine. I'm trusting him. I ain't crossing that road. Let somebody carry me. Somebody come over and get, get me. I'll, I'll go across that road. God says, your gold mine is across the street. I trust you, God, to bring it to me. Hallelujah. God said, I did enough for you. You just got to walk 16 feet. Usually that's about as wide as a single lane, two-lane highway, about 16 to 20 feet. All you got to walk is 20 feet. And you can get your blessings. Yeah, but you can supernaturally, you can, you, you can just bring it to me. We'll argue with God like that, you know. Not We really don't put it in the language like that, but that's what we're really saying. Bring me the pacifier. Because you know how I struggle I've been. I, I, you know how I've been all my life. I stood for righteousness. And all my life, I just, you, at least this one time, you can bring it to me. <laughs> no, you can't. Get up and walk. I got your two legs still going, boy. Get up. Roll that, son. <laughs> Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him. Get up every day. Put your clothes on work. You go to work, it is tough when you're not making enough money to pay all of the debt that you, that you can accumulate. See, we don't want to take the responsibility something. I know there's certain tax, and I know there's certain things that the enemy, I make your car blow up, blow up and you got to go buy another one after you just paid it off. I do this, and I do that to make it. Well, you just got to keep on going, trust in God that, hey, I'm going to be the lender, not the borrower. Why are you trying to put your pants legs in? This past week, I've been getting up at 4 o'clock going to work, of working, being at work. And 
you got to keep trusting God. You got to do what you got to do. The Lord put in my heart a while back. He said, son, what if I don't, if I, did, if I didn't exist? What you would you do? Think about that. That's how people say, well, I can't wait. okay, well, let, let, let's, let's look over here to the atheists over here. How y'all doing? All right. Y'all got to do what? We got to lie, cheat, steal, and kill, get what we want. Mm-hmm. What y'all Christians got to do? Well, we got to depend on God, and we trust God, but we can't move and can't do nothing. Hmm. Okay, let's reverse this. Atheists, come over here with your attitude saying, we got to do what we got to do. We ain't going to steal and kill and destroy because God said he, we don't do that. We're going to do what we got to do and take God with us and trust him that he's going to make a way with a cement throw away. He's going to give me victory over my enemies. He's going to raise the dead when the dead is dead. <laughs> Whatever it may be. See, meaning I got to get up, got to move, got to do, got to do, got to go, 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 go. I got to fight the good fight of faith. And then you take the atheists with it. They, 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 well, we ain't got no hope. So we ain't doing nothing. Now, now it looks good, dude. I mean, I don't hate to say it looks good, but it kind of rhymes with it now. Because when you ain't got trust in God, you ain't got no hope. You're not going nowhere. You're not going to move. Trust in him and he will help you. Trust in him. Commit everything you do. Did you see the key? That you do. I am. What you do? Sit on this bench. Somebody's going to come in here and ask me for rent money or say I can rent a place. Or what you you got to go look. You got to investigate it. You got to see if that's where you want to go. You got to see it. You got to check it out. Trust in God. But if you don't ever check it, how do you know God don't want you there? Or how you don't know that God don't, that how do you know that God do want you there? You got to do. You got to do. Trust in him. And he will help you. Psalms 33, verse 20 through 22. We put our hope in the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him, I hearts rejoice. Look here. For we Trust in his holy name. And I'm going to get on down here if I'll be able to finish it today. And I'm going to show you how this tr you have to trust before you have the real peace. you got to trust. And I, in him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. 22. Let your unfailing love surround us, Lord, for our hope is in you alone. For our trust is in you alone. Psalms 56, verse 3 through 4. But when I am afraid, oh, what happened? What do you do? When I start find out that doors ain't open, that needs to be open, and I find out the doors that is open need to be closed. So I, when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust. This is David writing this. King David. I trust in God. So why should I be afraid? Why I am worried what I'm going to eat about uh, tomorrow when I trust and know God knows I trust him and I done and went to work the best I could. I did what I could. I went the extra mile, praise God. I'm going, and I'm going to go another mile. Because why I keep telling you this for is because God allowed me. He said, son, what if I don't do it? What are you going to do? What are you, what would you do if I wasn't around? I'd just take the gun to kill myself, probably. That's the easy way out. But if you want to live life, you're going to have to do what you got to do. You're going to have to get out there and start planting, working, doing something. Or do like most of some of the world do. Take from the working man and steal it. 
because I really don't want to have to get up in the morning. But I go break in your house and steal your colored TV because I don't want to work for one. Matter of fact, that is work because I got to plan and watch you when you leave. So it still works, but it's just a little easy. I praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can, this is mere mortals, mean people do to me? Or the world system. That's why I say when I do, when God says do all you can do, and let me do be a part of this election, let me be a part of this country, do what you can do, let me intervene. But if something, and I, this is how he said, if something happens and it don't go the way you think it should go, I still trust God because I'm fixing to get out of here. Rapture is fixing to go. Praise God, y'all can have it. You see what I mean? I'm going to be protected. I'm going to be okay. Because I know evil cannot keep doing evil. And evil cannot keep going on. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And I know evil is not going to get away what God said. You cannot keep on doing the what you are doing evil and thinking you're going to get away with it tomorrow, the next day, 20 years, 40 years. The 100th year, baby, you fixing to hit rock bottom. You fixing to meet the maker. Something's fixing to happen. It's not going to get away with it. And that's why God is stirring up men and women that really listen to him. That they say, hey, y'all better wake up, America. Y'all better get, y'all better, y'all, y'all, y'all don't have certain things. Y'all still, they're like, who God? This is my life. Yeah, God's blessing my country, not because of Tim, because I myself allowed God to come into my country, come into my life, come into my business, come into my home. Come, oh, Father, come. That's the reason I'm getting blessed. That's the reason I'm prosperous. That's the reason. And I want him to change. Oh, yeah, here we go. And I want him to change me. I want him to make me a better person. Lord, learn, teach me how to not steal. Teach me, Lord, whatever it may be. Psalms 28, verse 7. Got to speed up a little bit. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. Now, this is David writing all this stuff. And you know how David was. He was a great man of the Lord. But he made mistakes. He killed another woman's husband. Not with his own physical hands, but hey, let him go out to war. Please, send him out to war. Basically, he did it because he didn't want to... No, I'm spiritually. But he found out that he had to trust God even though he was in the middle of a bad situation. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. Psalms. Let's go, let's go on through 8 through 9 if I can. Let's just see what that is. I had it. The Lord gives his people strength. He is safe. He's a safe fortress for his anointed king. I mean, see, David was talking about himself, his anointed king. Save your people, he said. This is King David pleading for the whole Israel, his whole country that he was over. He said, bless Israel. And this is the way I'll be. Bless United States with your special what? Position. Lead them like a shepherd, God, and carry them in your arms forever. God Almighty, have mercy upon the United States. God intervene, Father God, like you never intervened before. Reveal the evil one and let the evil one be exposed, Father God, so that they can quit, people quit believing these lies and be damned. Psalms, Jeremiah 17, verse 7 through 8. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go to first through first through eight. Let's go to Jeremiah one through six and then jump to seven through eight. Let's just see something here. I'm just gonna let the Lord. I mean, if I finish it, if I don't, we'll continue next Sunday. 
because I don't feel the Lord pushing me to finish, finish, finish. All right. The sin of Judea is inscribed with an iron chisel, meaning the sin of the people of Judea has been scorched. They scorched it. They would rebelled against God. They did not listen to God. In the same way, God said, put me a picture language. It's kind of like the United States. We are, have been keeping on, keeping on, keeping on, acting, talking, doing things, not praying. The church, not doing their part, not doing, doing, and doing, and to where we are chiseled, and branded our disobedience. And God says, I got to deal with it. Disobedience is disobedience. I got to get on to that. Engraved in the diamond point of their stony hearts and on the corners of their altars. Two, so I will hand over my holy mountain along with all your wealth and treasures to the pagan shrine. Man, God pull his head off of you. Along with your wealth, meaning as you plunder your, to your enemies, for sin runs rampant in your land. And when I was reading all this study, that was why I was going to, I went back and read it. And God said, I want you to understand and read this a little bit. And he said, and I'm going to let's show you how to bring it out. And look how he been. We have a lot of things in America. America have our problems and situations, but there's rampant things. People are not changing. People's not repenting. Churches are not repenting. Churches are not repenting. Churches keep on acting and putting on shows and concerts and everything, which is nothing wrong to have a have a, a concert or something for the youth or whatever. But we're putting it into where we can tame people to where to just make people feel good instead of telling what thus saith the Lord says. You cannot keep going the way you're going, America. And believe that I got to put my hand upon you and bless you. If I bless the United States, I will have to repent for all other nations and even to my own people in the old days that I did not move, did not move my hand because I would have kept my hand on them too. But God's always hand has to be lifted up because it hard-headedness of his own people, Israel. And the United States is no different. Our, okay, yes, Lord. And our own personal lives is no different. Mm. That should have went down. Each individual. I will tell you, the, the wonderful procession I have reserved for you slipped from your hands. I will tell your enemies to take you as captives to your foreign land. For my anger blazed like a fire that will burn forever. Oh, no. God ain't mean. No, he's not mean. He sure ain't. But he's not going to let Tim keep on acting the way Tim's acting and think that he's got to sit here and bless me or sit here and uh, my son paid an ultimate price for your sin, but, oh, you're my baby. Keep acting the way you act. That hurt me. This is what I feel the Spirit of God says. That hurt me. I could not say or allow him to say a word being weak, whipped and beat because I loved you so much. And you're going to take his blood and his Flesh for granted? Oh, you selfish people. Some of you ain't even listening. Oh, you selfish people. You better wake up. You better wake up. This is why the Lord says, cursed are those who put their trust in other things. Basically, I'm going to paraphrase it, put it in my language. Cursed are you thinking that you are free to do what you want to do with your own body. Oh, oh. Cursed are you thinking you got the right to take life and I'm the one to give life. Because you trust in, hey, democracy.
who rely on human strength, who rely on the people that says, I will give you this and I will give you that. Vote for me. I would do this and I would do. You think who's going to do that when he really come on the scene? Who knows who's going to do that? The Antichrist. Yes, help you, make it a way to where it be free. You know how to do the money that's inside the government money to make it free back to the people because the people done paid for it. Get the picture? Here we go. But just say it's going to be free doesn't mean it's going to be free. You're going to get the money from somebody. Mm. Move on. Their enemies who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. But look here. This is why the Lord says that. Go to 6. They are like stunned scrubs in the desert. With no hope for the future, they will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salted land. Ladies and gentlemen, if we don't do our part and just trust God, because like I said, we could do our part and then we said, well, if this didn't happen, the election didn't go the way we thought or whatever the situation it was, doesn't mean we fail God. We still trust in God because God's going to take care. He's thinking to get the church out of here. See, y'all don't y'all really don't believe this. I just y'all because why the church has been preached to so much of tip top through the tulips. And we can act, we can talk, we can do what we want to do. Boop, 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 boop. And then when something comes up against me that I can't understand, then I'll look at you, God. I can look at you, God. I'll look at you. You, God. <laughs> they would have no future. They would have no hope. Seven. Oh, but look at here. Hallelujah. God's putting this service together. He put does it. Look why he puts the scriptures together. But look what happened. But wait a minute here. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. So, see how he turned the page? You want to keep acting the way you acting this part of America? And the listen over, y'all better, tr- y'all better turn who you're going to serve this day. Because blessed are the ones who trust in the Lord. You went too fast. Let me go back to seven. Those who trust in the Lord and have made. See, that's where I trust him. Let's just get on the bandwagon. Hey, y'all, can we jump on y'all's wagon? Yeah, get on. Can you pick me up and put me on? You all right? You hurt? No, I just don't want to do nothing. who have made the Lord their hope and confidence. Hallelujah. God to be the glory. Now back to eight, boss. They are like trees planted along a river bank, river bank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees, such trees are not bothered by the heat or worry about the long months of the drought. Their leaves stay green. They never stop producing fruit. Oh, man, I better listen to this. You may even trust in the living God. I'm going to be took care of, praise God. I'm going to be, t- and oh, here we go. Hey, hey, throw me in jail, but guess what? You lead me to where, wasn't that David? Or was that, who was that? That was thrown in the pits and then thrown in jail and, and then the, uh, that was David, wasn't it? I think it was. If it ain't, I straightened it out down the road. But his brother sold him. Joseph, thank you. I knew it was. Joseph. Went all through those trials and tribulations, then what happened? He came to his destiny. Praise God because he trusts in God. Hallelujah. Every step, tears fall, but he still trusts. 
every step. He moved forward. He trusts the living God. Hallelujah. And that, hey, I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. I'm trusting God. And then I'm going to allow, when I'm trusting him, allowing that root go deep in the trust of the Lord, I'm going to keep producing fruit. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep getting in favor of the Lord. I'm going to keep on keeping on. Praise God. Ooh, God help me with this. Jeremiah 17. I done did that, right? Yeah. Jeremiah's name stands for whom the Lord appointed. His message was primarily primarily to for to warn of judgment upon Judah for their shameful and persistent sins. God brought him up to warn Judah about that. By you keeping on acting and keeping on acting and keeping on doing, killing, you keeping on doing this. And God raised Jeremiah up to say, you better trust in God. You better get on the Lord's side. But curse are you, those who are not on the Lord's side. No, I'm not going to finish. I'm going to finish, put this right. Trust means reliance on the integrity, relying on the integrity or the strength or the ability of a person or thing. Having confidence. Another part of definition of trust is confident expectation of something. Having hope. Expectation of something and having hope. Trust in the God. I got trust in the God and I'm expecting him to move on the behalf of his people. An expectation it can be any day, any time. And a hope that God's people will wake up. And a hope that God will do things that we've never seen before. Good things. But yet, justice. For the one who keep on beating and putting down, stealing, oh, and abusing. Fear and anxiety comes from not trusting. I got proof. That is true in the natural and spiritual. Fear comes from they don't trust. That's where fear comes from. Ooh, you ready? You really, you don't trust. For example, when a man or a woman don't have trust in their relationship, there's no peace. There's no peace. If I really don't trust my wife, I'm going to be constantly looking in her back door. I'm going to constantly go around and follow her. But where's the peace? She don't trust me. She's going, I can't tell him nothing because he act a fool if I tell him something. So she can't tell her story or tell what's bothering her or whatever because she don't trust me. Get the picture? So when fear and anxiety come, you really don't trust. Oh, y'all, that went over, didn't it? You don't trust? I'm for you and not against you. Trouble hits and good God. Huh? What? I'm telling you, God, I don't trust what you just said. If I don't get me a pistol up here. <laughs> People thought I need to quit suing that. Lord, help me with that. I don't trust you. Ew. I'm going to have to teach you on that a lot, ain't I? I don't trust you. I trust him. But I'm, no, no, no. You got to do what you got to do and keep trusting him. You can't sit there and let the enemy come in your refrigerator and keep taking everything out of your refrigerator and sit back. I trust God. He's going to bless me with more food. You want to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's going on around here? You got to check this out. You got to do what you got to do. I mean, I had somebody steal my tires one time behind my shed and found out two weeks later I seen him on a tire on the on old truck. <laughs> and 
And this is back in years. I was, still, I was in the 12th grade. And seen the tires went up. And I went up there. I said, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. So I went over and talked to him. How y'all doing? All right. Played like I didn't know what was going on. I looked down and, man, that's a nice ride right there. That's nice tires. Where did you get them at? At a junkyard in Kansas City? Hmm, did, didn't you? I said, I don't think so. You got them out of my house, about the back of my yard. No, you, I don't know who you talking to. I said, I'll tell you what, they mind. You go back here and find this such and such on the left side over there, you find a plug. Blah, blah, blah. There's a plug or whatever, you know, what I'm showing. Anyhow, long story short, God will make a way where there seemeth no way. And I told him, I said, look, if you would have came and knocked on the door, because the reason I found out they was gone, I was going to give them to my other friend that had needed some tires. Man, I got some tires. I just put some on my truck. I got some tires fit on your truck. I just bring them to you and give them to you. If you came knocking on my door and said, hey, man, he said, uh, what you doing with them tires behind your house? He said, I would have gave them to you, but you stole them from me. You stole them. My brother was there one time. I had a stick. I said, good God Almighty. Somebody better call the police around here. And I said, I was grown when I was 15 years old, so to speak. I was driving. <laughs> I grew up fast. My dad died early. But I, what I'm saying is I won't deal with it the right way. Don't just come in in somebody's house and steal that stuff. Ask for it. I brought my kids for it. You see something, you ask them. And if they don't want you to have it, leave it alone. God, trust God. He'll get you some ties. Get the picture. All right. All right. So we have to trust God. Then peace comes. We have to trust God, then peace. And I'm going to give you this last scripture, and I'm going to stop it here. Isaiah 26, verse 3 through 4. You will keep in perfect peace. See the difference? All who what? So trust has to come first. Trust got to come first. If I don't trust I, I, don't, I don't have peace. If I don't trust my neighbor, I'm going to stay up all night long with a shotgun. <laughs> you ain't stealing from me, I'm going to be your last time. What kind of preacher like that? A preacher that will blow you away. You will keep <laughs> in perfect peace all who trust in you. All who trust in you, all whose thoughts, here we go with the thoughts, are fixed on you. Everything that I think about is through God. God, what about this? How does this work? I trust you. I can't find this problem that I'm having at the house and with my dreams that we're having. God will trust you. You send us the right person or give me the right information in my mind to pull the right liquid down there to kill all the chemicals and make not all this fume gas coming around. I trust you, Lord. Somehow I know we're going to fix this problem. Always. I mean, every little thing. Trust God. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord always. There we go. I didn't know it was that the next scripture. Trust in the Lord always. For the Lord God is the eternal rock. For he is everything. And I want to cut it off right here because I ain't been able to finish it. But I'm telling you, you got to trust first. And I'm going to show you an example next Sunday how we trust. God gave me a demonstration how to do it. And trust. Trust God. But when you trust, you still got to move. You still got to do. You still got to... I believe God's going to pay every one of my bills off, but I'm not going to send them a payment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You'd be surprised. God's going to pay everything I off, but I ain't got to send you a dime. (sighs) 
I trust God that God will give me the strength to work that I can send it to you and trust God for how I can pay this off, how I can switch from Peter to John with no interest for now. I trust you, Lord. How can I get this situated if in reality I don't walk into Walmart and they say I'm the 50 million, million customer and I win some money? I got to have some wisdom to how to get this situated, put down under here and get it zero balance. <laughs> but I got to do what I got to do. I got to go check. I got to go do. I got to ask. I got to switch. Because God to be the glory. I mess around. I'm going to give you this little nugget. I mess around and have right before my 0% interest come in that goes out. And I said, Lord, because the Lord felt me a way how to get out of debt by switching things to 0%, 0%, 0%, 0%, 0%, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. See, because they kill you with this interest. I mean, they, the lender, what, is what? Slave to the buyer. So I don't want to be a slave to you. Sorry. So Lord help me with the wisdom. So zero, right before the six-month day come in, oh, I transfer it over here. Don't even cost you to transfer it, transfer it over here. Six months free interest, right before some of them two years. But just say just six months. Bless God, I switched it to six months, zero, 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 zero. And right before that six month come in, I'm like, Lord, what we're going to do, because they're going to charge you now all the six-month interest in the backfield back there because that's how they trap people. But I say, God, I don't trust them, man. I trust in you. Now, how are we going to do this to get this situated because I can't pay this off yet? So all of a sudden, oh, God, y'all fixing to make me shout. I'm fixing to run around this building. All of a sudden, my heavenly father said, you trust me. I sent another person in there with a no. Transfer your card over to this here, zero percent change for two more years. <laughs> God to be the glory. I'm serious. My wife can tell you. Some of us, she's like, you give it to your daddy, but I'm like, I need some help. No. She always find a way. It ain't because of me. It's because I trust God. I trust God. Somewhere down the line, he has bring it out because I trust him. I trust him. Because if it doesn't come in, if one didn't come in, guess what I would have? I still got to pay the interest. So either way, Lord, I got to do what I got to do. But God, I trust you. But help me. Then he'll start teaching you, don't put it on the credit card no more. <laughs> yes, sir. Have more willpower. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet. I'm going to continue it next Sunday. It is good because I'm going I'm to give you an example. Like I said, hopefully as God teaches me how to do it to make it simple for us, how we trust, whether you realize it or not, you trust in something. You trust it. If it ain't nothing but just you, you trust in something. But I'm going to bring it out next Sunday. But I want y'all to let this soak in. I want y'all to understand, folks, this is time for us to trust God with our, all of our being. No matter what the circumstances goes on, no matter how what's going on in our lives, we got to learn how to trust God, but yet do what we have to do. That's the, that's the difference. You got to do what you got to do, but still trust God. God, I got to get out of here. It's hard clay. Plant by the betas. <laughs> it's so hard. My back hurt. My joints. <laughs> Nothing wrong sometimes because it can't get rough. Yes, sir, baby. I love people walk around here and talk about things. How life, man, life, life ain't life. People, life ain't fair. You better believe it. And if you don't have a learner with a holy God of Almighty, know how to trust, life will run you, run you, not only ruin you, but run you. Don't have peace, you don't have joy, you don't have confidence, you don't have nothing. Bless God, I done got tired of that dag I'm living. Y'all heard that word, didn't you? Y'all heard, I'm tired of that. I'm going to have peace 
by trusting my God. And while I'm doing I'm not plowing to get my tomatoes, plant them, get in there and rub. Oh, God. Father, I love you. I praise you. Instead of saying, God, why you don't make this beta? Somebody come plant my tomatoes. Why you can't make some? Why you can't make this life easier than what it is? Y'all ain't never done that. But I've done that before. I thought, I trust in God. Give me the strength to plow another day. <sighs> and go out, learn how to kill the bugs off of it. Man, it's just so much teaching out of this you can get. Get there all of a sudden, God says, ah, now let me go ahead and intervene for this boy. Let me go ahead and intervene in for his behalf. Let me let this plant produce fruit more than he can handle to where when he grabs it and plucks it, honey, take it to the neighbor's house. Praise God, we got more than enough. Hallelujah. No, we better store it up for doomsday. Trust God, folks. Learn how to trust God, but you can't trust God in mammon too. You can't trust God in everything else too. You got to make up the one who you really going to trust. I'm going to trust God. You know, my baby, grandbaby over there was born with that, was, had the problems that she had. Trust God that she took care of. God proved himself. Didn't go, what I, if I wouldn't, we, we wouldn't have went through it, how would we know how to really trust God? Does it make me want to say my next big grandbaby to have it? No. Uh-uh. To be born early. It makes me, I trust God for that, and I trust God to keep that one coming, praise God. And every part on him, every eyes perfect, he can see, hear, because there's people that's born full term that don't can't hear, can't see, can't do it. Praise God. I'm trusting God for everything. Hallelujah. And you guess what? It doesn't stop there, folks. I told them my kids, I said, them babies will keep you on your knees because I done had three. Because you're going to have to keep you on your knees. God, keep them strengthened while they're still here. When the cold comes, God, kill them. God, do this. God, do that. Constantly, people think, well, we got through that battle, so woo, we can do what we want to do. Nope, because another battle's coming. See, trust God. Now God, trust them. Do God keep them healthy if you out the week? Trust them to this. Whatever it may be, folks, trust the living God. You cannot just trust him half a day and then worry, don't worry about it next month. You better start being trained how to trust God 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, plus leap year. So that you can live in this life, as God says, more than a conqueror. The lender and not the barrier. The head, not the tail. Bless going in, bless going out. Mm, yeah, give me happy now. Woo! Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for being here. We thank you so much, Lord God. You're bringing us to the place how to trust you in the middle of the storm or while we see the storm coming or something. We trust you, Lord. We trust you, God, that you'll keep us and help us to give us the wisdom how to prepare for the storm even, Father God. Whatever it may be, Lord, we still trust in you. And Father, I pray that each and every one and even one and everyone by internet that, that they'll learn how to trust God and not only just sit there and trust him, but yet be a doer by trusting him. Trusting him that God is going to make a way with a seemeth no way when I get up every morning to go to work. God's going to make a way. God's going to help me. God's going to guide me. Every time when I get up and have to go to the doctor and take my treatment, I'm going to keep expecting God's going to make a way where there seemeth no way that God is going to take care of me. God's going to heal me. God's going to in allow them to invent a cure or whatever it may be, God, because I trust in you, Lord. I trust, trust. My hope is in you. My future is in you. You, 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 God, you. 
And then God said, and I felt the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me. Then God says, then when you learn that, I will get up off my throne and I will step in the middle of your situations and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will take my hand, my right hand, and sweep across to where you can walk on clear paths. I will make a way where there seemeth no way. I will be your God and you will be my son. You will be my daughter. You will be my people, saith the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we all pray. Amen. God bless you all. Bring your tithes and offers to the Lord.